Hello, I'm BJ Williams. Welcome to KTLA Voices presenting Mental State, where we explore the state of mental health and the challenges facing various communities across the nation. With July being Minority Mental Health Awareness Month, we brought together four men to talk about vulnerability with our partnership with Can I Be Vulnerable? So, fellas. What's going on? Man? How you doing, man? Yeah, 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 I don't want to talk. <laughs> Be good. What's up, bro? Yeah. Yeah, listen, why don't you introduce yourselves? Go ahead. Yeah. All right, I'm uh, Herschel Dennis, uh, former USC tailback from 02 to 07, uh, the creator of Healing Depression. I partner up with We Are Working Together and also uh, athletics, athleticcounselors.org. And uh, it's just uh, organizations that, that provide platforms and resources for younger athletes to have the, the proper mentorship that they need mm -hmm. to help them through their athletic journey. So. All right, right, right. And um, Aaron Mansell, just uh, from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Just can I be vulnerable? Alumni. Um, that's, I don't have all the extended. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's up? My name is Thomas Williams. I'm a former NFL football player turned uh, author, motivational speaker, uh, first book, Permission to Dream for middle school and high school kids and the relentless pursuit of greatness, helping athletes transition into the next stage and the next play of their life. And oh, man. Finally. What's up, people? My name is Jimmy V. Um, I'm an actor. I'm as well as a host. I'm the creator of a Building My Empire, which is all about sharing information and knowledge so we can all build our empires together, you know, so bmeofficial.com. Sounds good. All right, so these are the alumni. Uh, we're going to jump right to it, man. We got a little, little delayed a little bit, so we're going to jump right to it. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I'm sorry, Can I Be Vulnerable is a docu-series um, that I created uh, with my own personal story and uh, kind of just grew from there. So I was able to ask a bunch of friends of mine if they'll be willing to be vulnerable with me on camera, uh, telling their personal stories, their trials, their tribulations, their growth, their, you know, their wins. So. We're going to talk about that with a few with a few questions. Um, so, Herschel, we're going to start with you, man. Um, in, in your video, one of your themes was you talked about uh, incarceration. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, take us through that little that little portion of your video of your episode and tell us how that was for you. Well, uh, the in incarceration part, I think it was a, a, a mind opening experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it really woke woke me up to my capabilities of what I, you know what I actually am capable of doing right. uh, before that happened you know I was my mindset wasn't quite where it needed to be in, in terms of knowing exactly who I am and it took a, a dramatic misfortune situation uh, for me to for you know for me to recognize you right. know who I am and what I'm capable of and and the whole idea that why I started the organization and why, why we're working with, uh, with Can I Be Vulnerable and everybody else mm -hmm. is to help these young athletes kind of not allow themselves to get to that place. Right. And um, basically kind of figure out who they are outside of the sport so they could, you know, when that transition that does happen to them and it will happen, it just be a little bit more smoother. So uh, when, when that happened to me, man, it, I mean, I, was, I think I was about 31, and it took me to 31, you know. To figure that, it out. Yeah, to figure it out. And once I, once I did, then, and, you know, a whole nother energy and motivation, right. you know, comes about. So we could get that motivation into the kids a little bit earlier, man. It's very beneficial. Mid-30s. I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Where I'm going to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Aaron, for you, you talked about... Uh, you know, one of the strong themes in yours was accountability. Yeah. Mm. And you had this quote um, that I always, I say this now is, I didn't have a hard life, I made my life hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, that stuck out with you. But th this is your story, man. Tell us a little bit about why accountability was such a strong thing for you. Um, I, if you met my mom, you know she's the type of person who, she tells you what it is, you gotta hold yourself accountable. She's not gonna sit there and hold your hand. You know right from wrong, right. you know what you gotta do, so just do it. Anytime I mess up, it's on me. School, she wasn't one of those people who, well, the parents aren't helping, they're not doing nothing. No, you're in class, I'm not. Right. So it was always just, that's just how she was and right. everything I did. Um, I was not much, I wasn't very accountable and it was something I had to work on myself. Now it's something I hold my daughter to, I hold friends to, I hold family to. Mm -hmm. And as I get older, I want people to be more accountable emotionally because I had people who would put their emotions on me and make me responsible for it. Mm -hmm. I said, now, this year, I can't be accountable for people who aren't emotionally evolved. They got to they gotta work on their own emotions. You know what? I, that's funny you say that, man, because I, I just had a small thing earlier this morning about, like, I, if you don't tell me how you feel, 
I can't. I'm not going to know. I can't yeah. do anything right. about it. Right. And I'm not going to sit here and guess or try to pull it out of you. You'll tell me when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that, that being emotionally responsible with somebody is like, man, I'll help. Yeah. But I'm not going to do the work for you. And people love to throw it on you about how they feel <laughs> instead of trying to step back and say, well, how did I get here to these feelings? Right. Why is it their fault that I'm feeling this way? Because you, you have a choice. You have a choice with your emotions. You have a choice with your life. You don't have to be emotional and let it control you. You got to learn to control it. Right. And, and you talked about accountability in yours, too. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's huge. Man. And doing that. Uh, so, Thomas, yours, you, you talked about uh, insecurity. Yeah. You know, growing up biracial, you're not black enough, you're not, you're not right. white enough. You're, right. You know, and that, how that carried you throughout, how you maneuvered through, you know, through life. Yeah. You know I mean, so I'm going to let you. Yeah, you know, and I wasn't able to identify it until I got done playing football. Right. So talking about the transition, being done with ball, because the whole entire time I was growing up, I used those insecurities and masked them, literally, and, you know, with the face mask and helmet. And then once I took the jersey off, once I took the helmet off, those insecurities faced me face to face mm -hmm. and they said what you gonna do you gonna run right. where you gonna run to <laughs> right. and you don't have anywhere to run when it's just you in the mirror mm -hmm. and so growing up being biracial you know black and white not knowing where to fit in you know when I'm with this side of the family this is how we do things when I'm with this side of the family this is how we do another and I think it was the hardest thing of just like Aaron was talking about is that I didn't hold myself accountable and saying, this is what I want to do with my life. Right. I can't blame mom. I can't blame dad. I can't blame this is the way that God created me. And so for me, the hardest part of insecurities is that you have to look in the mirror and say, this is what I'm insecure about. Yeah. Because right. so many of us, I've had people, you know, in conversations will say, you're insecure. And insecure is not a correct term. I have insecurities, right. but I'm not insecure. Secure. But some of the different issues, um, whether it was biracial, being afraid to speak up in classrooms, not wanting to read out loud when right. I was growing up because I didn't want the stigma of a dumb jock. So the insecurities, man, take me a long time. And to be honest with you, the only way I was able to get through it was through going to see a therapist. Right. Wow. And so that's one of the biggest things that helped me with those insecurities. Uh, that's funny. We're going to transition right to, uh, to Jimmy V over here because uh, you talked about in your video having a speech impediment. And I remember right. you said not wanting to talk to anybody, let yeah. alone read out loud in, in, in school. And now you're an actor and a host. Right. That's so right. So yeah. talk about the, the, the triumph or the tribulation and the triumph of having a speech impediment and right. coming so, to you now. Ever since a kid, you know, just, just struggling to get what you actually want to say out. You just always have a constant thought inside your head I know exactly what I want to say but actually speaking it you know it's 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 always tough but it's always how those you're speaking to you see it in in their eyes as if you know they feel bad or you know many different things of that sort so just as I got older and comf comfortable with Myself, I just always said, I've got a story to share, you know, which is why now I understand why I love to act because I tell other stories through different mm -hmm. characters. So just to go back to myself, I just always keep in mind that there's also somebody else out there that stutters as well and they don't speak up because I know exactly how that feeling was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's tough, you know, but um, once you understand that your voice is where you get your strength from, you Gucci. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. We're going to go back down the line again. Uh, with Can I Be Vulnerable, what, if I can ask, what was the hardest part to you about, you know, the interviews we did? I think just uh, basically facing your insecurities, like, like Thomas was saying, yeah. being able to recognize them. And because if you don't recognize them or if you're not, if you're not comfortable with, with sharing them, you know how can how can how is anybody going to help you? Right, right. You know, and I think that was the that was the biggest thing with me that I dealt with because of the person uh, that I was with just all the uh, the, the pressure. Right. That was because you, you know, come from uh, you know your accolades. If you guys don't know, this man is a legend in Long Beach, Long Beach Poly. <laughs> okay. And so I yeah. remember looking. He used to be in the Vegas newspapers. That's how <laughs> yeah. that's how nice dude was. So I can understand having that pressure and then right. going to SC and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. And, and, and being the, the the first person in my family to go to college, and I got I got about a hundred thousand cousins. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm some more than black. So so when you got all that pressure and and everybody's looking up to you to like be the one to make it, right. mm. and then and then when you're not making it, you know you're like man how to but. 
but nobody would be able to tell because whenever you're around me or whenever you see me, you know, I'm always happy. I got a smile on my face and I'm just, I don't want to bring that negative attention or negative energy towards anybody else. So I, I just mask it, put, hone it down. Right. And then by the whole time you're just killing yourself. So I think it, it, it was so big, man, when, uh, uh, my boy Terrell Thomas, uh, shout out to T Deuce. He told me to get a hold of you and to be a part of this. Can I be vulnerable? Yeah. Because uh, that, that's exactly what I needed to do was to be able to be vulnerable to speak what was going on yeah. with me. You know, like it's okay to like, hey, I got you know, I'm messing up. I got problems. So yeah, I need help from somebody instead of you know, every, you know, trying to help everybody. Right. Which you know, I got you know, everybody has a big. A lot of people have a big hearts. Yeah. I have a re really big heart, so. Trying to, you know, act, actually asking for help yeah. was, was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Aaron? Um, I mean, for me, it was just bringing back those those memories, those things I kept I kept deep down. Um, mm -hmm. My mom looked at it. She was like, "What's going on with you?" She didn't know how I was feeling. She didn't even know I was feeling this way. Right. So having to bring that up, bring that to her, present it to her, not knowing how she would react, and letting her know in advance, "This is who I'm meeting with. This is what I'm doing." Right. Mm -hmm. It was tough. Thomas. Yeah, I would say the hardest part was after I share this, how I will be perceived. Right. You know, once people see me, can I be vulnerable? Right. And if I'm authentically me, are you still going to accept me? Are you going to love me? Right. Or am I going to hold on to those same insecurities after I release it? I mean, just to go off with exactly what you said, after I actually finally had the conversation, because I've been dying to speak about it, and mm -hmm. it wasn't until I saw your first few clips, I was like, you know what? I just automatically got Yes, mm -hmm. I have to do it, right? Right. So then once I was able to do that, especially as a host, you try to put on everything is good, blah, blah, right. blah, and smile. But deep down, like you, mm -hmm. you said, we got some stuff that we're working out. So just being able to be in front of the camera and actually finally have the conversation was my key. Uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, we got a, I got a question in from, from, from the boss lady. Uh, we're going to talk about representation and, and, or lack thereof. Mm of black men in the media, whether it be news, whether it be TV or just sports itself, because you know, most of us on stage are athletes. We play it at a high level. Right. And uh, so, so talk about what you saw, what you didn't see in media from, from black men growing up and now. I think uh, what we're lacking is the, there's the correct mentorship, you know, and uh, like it's, I guess don't, I don't know if people watch, I'm, I'm sure people do, but they're like last chance you. Right. Left. Just watching these kids uh, talk about how football is all they got. Right. You know, it's so sad and it saddens me man, right. to see that because uh, it's not. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> not. And and then, but that's what the the media wants to put out. You know, that's what they kind of want to show for because it's a story for them. So, I mean, I think we're doing a better job of making mental health a little bit more mindful and aware mm -hmm. of people. Now we got a month. I didn't even know it was mental. <laughs> Minority know, month. Yeah, but I know it now. <laughs> And it's I, a lie, my right. Right. <laughs> So I think I think we're we're making steps towards it to making people aware and how important it is, because uh, I mean I, I didn't hear growing up, you know, just just you got to be tough. Man up. You got to man, man up. Man yeah. up you know, was always a thing. Yeah, because yeah, well the, the reason that they gave you that that information is because that's all they knew. Right. You know. So finally, you know, having other people that yeah. other you know the young adults, young Black Americans could could relate to have the same type of stories and be able to share with them and let them know that they're, you know, so good. in the same boat. I mean, for me, just what I'd always see is just, you don't see a lot of it from the men as far as standing up and putting it out there as something to talk about, being okay to talk about. Even right. my stepdad who played professional football, I watch him now and he still struggles with it mm -hmm. just because it's always what she's yeah. taught. Like Herschel said, when you play sports, we play football, you gotta be hard, you gotta be man up. And it just mm -hmm. transitions into life as right. a father, as a leader, as whatever you are. And it's just, you see it more from the women pushing the men towards it than right. you do from the men. They're, they're real hesitant. And yeah, we like to resist it when they do it. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah like, nah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not doing but that. They know, right. they know, like, you can be better. And it's like, nah, nah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Thomas. You know what? I think, you know, just watching you and as you put it out, it gave me the liberty to do it. And all of us up here and all the other alumni, I think that's the uh, representation that we, there, we have the opportunity to give now. You know, I r remember reading a quote said, vulnerability is not weakness, vulnerability is strength. Yes. And when you can see yourself and you can fully be who you are, it's just a liberating feeling. You don't hold things down. Right. 
and by having good friends who listen or a therapist, um, somebody with an unbiased opinion to help us get our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because being athletes, you were taught and coached to have specific thoughts, nothing else. Specific. You know, we had these yeah. saying it was, you know, smart enough to line up, dumb enough to play. Right. And so for us, mm -hmm. we have to uh, get to the point of how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? And I would say that the person on the opposite side who's listening is really be invested in the answer. Don't just ask somebody how you doing, it's just keep on walking, right? right? How you doing? And you can see, mm. and then you check in with somebody. Right, Jimmy. You know what, I think this type of conversation exactly here is what's needed to change the narrative that yeah. we haven't seen in the yeah. past years, you know? Um, I'm a huge hip hop kid, you know, so, uh, <laughs> and listening to artists, you know, they never talk about mental health, they never talk about, you know, all these, all these incidents that they go through coming up in their hood or like, you know, different areas where they are actually experiencing, you know, PTSD from those certain situations, right. you know? So somebody like a J. Cole, you know, one reason why I love listening to his music is he actually speaks about mental illness, you mm -hmm. know, actually speaks about those, those topics that we are afraid to touch upon our, ourselves because somebody might look at us strange, mm -hmm. we might get joked on, yeah. but once we, understand we're all human at the end of the day and the conversation needs to happen in order for us to grow from it. Right. Uh, so self-care tips, what do you personally do for self-care? Obviously we've gone, gone through some healing on, on our own terms, whether through therapy, mentorship, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so for your day-to-day, -day, what do you do for, you know, to take care of yourself, your mental, your emotional? I, I like to start with my morning. You know, I think the morning is really important. Waking up and, uh, feeding yourself some positive energy, some positive words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, I listen to Jim Rohn, John Maxwell, uh, just, just some inspirational speakers to kind of get my, my mindset on the right track to start my day off. So. Okay. Um, big on reading, writing. Um, I look for different books. I ask friends, family, you know, what are you reading? What are you suggesting? And it doesn't have to be a particular type of genre just just reading thing. but for me writing just getting out right. thoughts that frustration what you mean you don't listen to me in the book <laughs> 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 hey, 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 hey. hold on look hey. I, got, I forgot it's all right, man. <laughs> next time anyways i see something uh you know first and foremost man i wake up and uh just be thankful but even more important than that i've started to journal get my thoughts down on paper right, uh, right. it's helped me and then also too you know physical fitness is big yeah, and it's not big. just how i look it's it's how i feel right and uh most, and then other than, other than that, man, just connecting with people. Like really looking at somebody and being like, man, how y'all doing? I, I, my soul needs that, right. so yeah. that helps me. Man, lately I've been meditating, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I take 10 minutes out of my day, at least minimum, just to sit down, gather my thoughts, wish myself luck on the day that's about to come, and I also pray, of course, you know. Absolutely. Uh, for me, I uh, cannot be vulnerable, man. I'm not gonna lie to you, that is my, that is my, my positive daily affirmation to see grown men open up and get, you know, their emotions right, man. That's man. super dope for me. Um, and also, the comments that I get, I get the, uh, you know, the phone calls and the text messages, the screenshots, the tweets mm, of people saying, hey, I shared this with X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. So those things right there, that's my... You know my coping. That's my self help. You know my self help thing, and it also keeps me keeps me going with this because we're what forty something episodes deep now, man. Mm, so man. to get forty something grown black men to say, and then can I take this time real quick? <laughs> I mean, sir. yes, you please, sir. You know, man. Yeah. 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 And uh, thank you everybody that that watches and and will continue to watch as well, man. Uh, we're gonna keep this going as long as men want to tell their stories and and young men and and women and children and oh, excuse me, boss lady is talking to me. <laughs> and also, we'll be back August 6, 2019, for part two of our CIBB collaboration with Mental State and KTLA. Be sure to subscribe to KTLA's YouTube page as well. And we'll have another group of alumni to talk right here about their mental health journeys and how they can be vulnerable as well. Thank you, fellas, man. I really do appreciate y'all. Thank, thank you, you. Appreciate brother. You, brother. <laughs>